Developing your character is a key part of the Guild Wars 2 role-playing experience, but how will you do that if you don't know what any of the important numbers and words mean? Fortunately, this video is here to save the day. As the title suggests, this video is divided into two broad sections, gear and attributes. If you're familiar with role-playing game concepts, you may just want to skip to the Guild Wars 2 specific stuff that you may desire knowledge about, like runes, sigils, and the entire second half of the video, which covers what exactly each Guild Wars 2 attribute does. This is also a very information-dense video, and if some of this seems a bit complicated, well, that's because it is quite complicated. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games such as Guild Wars 2 are tricky beasts with myriad systems interlocking with each other. The length of this series is good evidence of that. So if you have questions or need some extra clarity, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Let's get into the video. Your character has many attributes decided in large part by the type of gear you choose. These attributes determine what your character is good at, whether that be dealing massive damage or healing allies. Most abilities interact or scale with attributes in some way, so you'll want to make sure that your gear lines up with your choice of skills. Before we can talk about exactly what all these numbers mean, we need to know how items and gear work in the game. Your character can equip six armor pieces, two weapon sets, and six trinkets. All of these items can have attributes to make you more powerful, and some have unique features of their own too. Armor pieces have a defense value, which is exactly what it sounds like. Higher defense is less damage taken. There are three distinct armor weights, which have different levels of defense in Guild Wars 2. Light, medium, and heavy. Each profession in the game can use one and only one of these weights. The difference isn't as huge as it can often be in other games, but it is significant. A light armor player with equal attributes will take around 15% more direct damage than a heavy armored player. However, this does not affect condition damage. Armor pieces can also have a rune attached. Runes are upgrade components that give you more attributes and special effects depending on how many of the same rune your armor set has attached. The best bonuses are usually on the final bonus for all six runes, so make sure you get a full set in and not just six totally different ones. Runes are very powerful and can often help to specialize your character in one direction or cover up a weakness in your setup by bringing an effect to the table that your profession is lacking. Weapons are similar to armor, but instead of defense, they have a weapon strength. This is involved in direct damage calculation, and the higher the weapon strength, the harder the weapon hits. Weapon strength is one of the very few elements of randomness in the combat system, and although it isn't usually a deciding factor, sometimes you'll wipe on a boss at 0.1% and wonder what might have happened if you rolled better on weapon strength. But fortunately in player versus player, this isn't an issue, as weapon strength has had its randomness purged and just uses the average value instead. Weapons, just like armor, have an upgrade component called a sigil. Sigils, however, unlike runes, don't increase in power the more of the same types of sigil that you stack, and they are only active while you are actually using the weapon they're attached to. This means you could have one weapon set that has extra healing and one with extra damage, but you won't have all the bonuses at the same time. Sigils, in addition to passive bonuses, also often trigger when you do something involving your weapons, like weapon swap to that weapon set, or land a critical hit, or even interrupt your foes. Because of this, they add another layer of gameplay to how you handle yourself in combat, and while they can have quite subtle effects, sigils are a key part of optimizing your build and filling in weaknesses, just like runes. Trinkets are very simple. They just give you a bunch of attributes, and they can make your character look mildly ridiculous with particle effects and giant backpacks. It is worth noting, though, that there are four types of trinket. Characters can use one backpack, one amulet, two accessories, and two rings. This might seem like a pointless distinction, but the difference is, is that each type of trinket grants a different number of attribute points. Now, let's talk about how the attributes on gear actually works. Instead of unique items with different combinations of effects and attributes, Guild Wars 2 items have one of many preset combinations. At max level, items can have three, four, or in one case, seven attributes at once. 
Note that combinations with more attributes have more total stats and allow you a bit more diversity, but they are of course more spread out, making it harder to get value out of all of them, and the primary attributes will be lower the more attributes an item has. These combinations have a name associated with them. For example, items with power, precision, and ferocity are berserker items, very dangerous. And an example of a weapon with berserker attributes would be a berserker's pearl sword, very simple. However, a lot of items are not streamlined this way. In fact, a lot of higher end gear or special items never follow this naming rule. Because of this, relying on item names to determine what attributes they have is a great way to get bamboozled. Fortunately, you can just learn what all the attributes do by watching this video and you'll know exactly what an item can do for you. Great! The final aspect of items that affects attributes is an item's quality. As you might expect, there are different qualities of items in the game. A random level 2 rusty dagger is nothing compared to a glowing magical sword looted from a raid boss. The better the quality, the more powerful the item for its level. The item qualities in the game are as follows. Basic, fine, masterwork, rare, exotic, ascended, and legendary. Level 80 exotic and ascended items are considered to be worthy of the endgame and are very helpful to have before heading into any serious business. Legendary gear often comes with a fancy appearance and, as an added convenience to offset the eye-watering expensiveness, can be attribute swapped at any time, adjusting to any situation or profession. Thankfully, however, legendary gear isn't actually better than ascended in terms of defense, damage, or attributes, only convenience. This is a big theme for the endgame gearing in Guild Wars 2. A big perk of Ascended and Legendary gear, for example, is that any of your characters can use them instead of getting locked to a particular character, meaning you can much easily try out different characters because after a certain point of playing the game, you don't need to re-gear anymore, only share. There is a slight quirk specific to exotic trinket items. They actually have their attributes split into two, the main attributes and then an upgrade slot that offers further potential customization. As the upgrade, usually a gemstone or a crest of some kind, can have different attributes to the item itself. This is seldom important though, as ascended gear is just better and you can achieve the same customization by just mixing and matching items. Now that we've got a grasp on how items work, let's take a look at what those attributes do for us. All attributes and their current values for your character can be viewed in the hero panel, so let's take a look. First up, and with a wonderfully descriptive tooltip, is power, which increases attack. What that refers to is direct damage, or as it's commonly referred to as power damage. There is no such thing as a base damage value in Guild Wars 2. All directly damaging abilities in the game scale directly with power. Twice the power is double the damage. And if you had zero power, you would deal zero damage on every attack. Fortunately, power has a 1000 baseline value, so that won't happen. Each ability in the game scales differently. For example, Water Blast from the Staff Weapon of Elementalist gains 0.3 damage per point of power, but the Whirling Defense of a Ranger's Axe gains a massive 7.92 extra damage. These different coefficients designate certain abilities or weapons as great for dealing direct damage and others for healing, support, condition damage, or even a mixture. This will be a running theme in this video, but using the appropriate weapons in combination with your gear is very important. Some weapons can be very weak with power gear, but devastatingly strong with condition damage gear, and the other way around too. Power is directly related to a few other attributes, so let's go over them now. Power attacks have a chance to critically strike. This is determined by precision. Precision starts at a value of 1000, and every 21 points of precision over that 1000 increases your critical strike chance by 1%, from the base critical strike chance of 5%. That sounds a little bit odd, but just pretend that that 1000 is zero, and it will be easy to think about that. Precision directly leads us on to ferocity, which controls just how good your critical strikes are. Each 15 points of ferocity increases your critical strike damage by 1%. Critical strike damage is very straightforward. 150% critical strike damage means your critical strikes deal 150% of normal damage. 
The link between these three attributes mean that all of them are very desirable to have together in order to deal great power damage. In particular, ferocity with precision, as without good precision, all your ferocity won't be doing much as it only activates on a critical strike. But what about reducing power damage? Well, that's what armor does. It's just like the opposite of power. Double your armor and you take half damage from power attacks, but not from conditions. Armor can't help you at all against those. A character's armor value is derived from two things. Defense, which is found on all armor equipment pieces, including shields, which is technically a weapon, and toughness, which starts at a base value of 1000 and can be found attached to any item. Each point of toughness is equivalent to one point of defense, which is nice and easy. So your armor value is just defense plus toughness. As mentioned earlier, there are three armor weights in Guild Wars 2 that all have different defense values, light, medium, and heavy. The type of armor you can use is dependent on your profession choice. Elementalists, necromancers, and mesmers use light armor. Rangers, engineers, and thieves use medium. And warriors, guardians, and revenants use their heaviest equipment. Bear in mind that the base difference in durability does become smaller as toughness values increase, as toughness affects all characters equally. So, in other words, as toughness rises, the initial armor difference becomes less and less significant compared to the total armor value of a character. This means that just because you have light armor, it doesn't prevent you from being a monstrous tank. Another consequence of the base values of defense and toughness is that doubling your toughness does not double your armor because of how maths works. A final note on toughness is that certain bosses in raids, which are the most challenging encounters in the game, will target the player with the highest toughness as the tank, so watch out for that. Another way to stay alive is by having a massive health pool, and that comes from vitality. Each point in vitality increases your hit points by 10, and everyone starts off with 1,000 vitality, or 10,000 extra health. You might have noticed that that doesn't quite add up. This is because in addition to armor weights, professions in Guild Wars 2 also have one of three base hit point values. Warriors and necromancers have a giant 9,212 base hit points, or 19,212 with the 1,000 vitality. Revenants, engineers, mesmers, and rangers have 5,922, or 15,922 with the base vitality, and elementalists, thieves, and guardians have a pathetic 1,645 base hit points, thankfully boosted up to 11,645 with their starting attributes. This greatly contributes to a profession's overall durability, but not entirely so. Professions with low base health often have tools to survive outside of just tanking damage. For example, thieves, while squishy, are often very hard to take down in player versus player thanks to their stealth and evasion. Elementalists can defend themselves with barriers, auras, and self-healing. This contrasts with the necromancer, which although has a large health pool, it doesn't have much in the way of avoidance and uses high health and life force to directly absorb damage instead. So if you're ever feeling sad about your low health, just remember that ArenaNet designed your profession to be balanced around that. Mostly. True durability comes from having a high health pool and toughness as well. High vitality helps prevent you from getting bursted down quickly or even getting one shot, and also helps you soak up condition damage while you scramble to remove them, which toughness does nothing against. Toughness does, however, synergize perfectly with vitality against power damage by making your extra hit points each worth more, as your opponent will have to hit you harder with power damage to get the same number as on a lower toughness target, not only further making your character resistant to burst damage, but also effectively multiplying each extra point of HP to give you a larger, effective health pool. Now that we know about toughness and armor, I want to take this moment to talk about just how good protection is. We discuss protection in the Boons and Conditions Guide. It reduces incoming power damage by 33%. That's equivalent to around 1,000 toughness, more if you already have high toughness from your gear. 
1,000 extra attributes from a single boon is absolutely insane. For perspective, equipping a full set of tank gear might give you around 1,200 extra toughness. That means even in a full glass cannon setup, protection makes you nearly as durable as a tank. Fury is an incredible boon because it gives you 20% crit chance, which is 420 precision, but protection is over double that in stat value. This demonstrates exactly why having protection or other percentage damage reduction effects is incredibly strong. The same is of course true for vulnerability on the other end, as it essentially removes loads of toughness from your opponents, but vulnerability needs to be stacked up a lot to scratch protection. All of that hard-earned toughness and protection won't save you against conditions though. Let's take a look at the condition attributes. Conditions are modified by two attributes, condition damage and expertise. Condition damage is very similar to power. Damaging conditions scale based off condition damage, so the more condition damage you have, the more damage per second per stack your conditions will do. Different conditions do scale differently, and you can see the coefficients on the screen here. One difference between power damage and condition damage is that conditions do have a base value, meaning that even if you have zero condition damage, which is the base value, your conditions will still do some damage. The other vitally important attribute here is expertise. Expertise funnels into condition duration, which is displayed in the hero panel as a percentage and is capped at 100%, meaning any extra past that point will have no effect. To get an extra percentage of condition duration, you'll need 15 expertise, just like ferocity. Condition duration is very powerful for a number of reasons. It acts as a flat modifier for your conditions. If they last twice as long, they'll deal twice as much damage. Note that expertise also affects debilitating conditions. Extra long, immobilize, chill, or cripple can be absolutely fun for your enemies. Expertise also allows you to have more conditions on your foes at the same time, because each stack of a condition you apply will stick around for longer, while you apply more, meaning they'll be taking more damage per second constantly as long as you keep attacking, making them harder to deal with, harder to remove, and eventually overloading your opponents. Many profession-specific abilities, runes, or sigils also increase condition duration outside of expertise, and they are often very powerful, as they commonly increase the duration of a specific condition by 20% or more, which is 300 expertise or more. Huge value. In fact, these bonuses can be so strong that certain specialized rune and sigil sets can almost remove the need to have expertise on your gear at all if you only care about one condition. A great example of this would be using Balthazar runes and a smoldering sigil. Together, those provide 70% burning duration, a massive 1,050 expertise worth. As you can see, conditions are only dependent on two attributes, whereas power damage is dependent on three. This means that it's quite common for condition builds to be able to have enough room to fit in a defensive attribute into their gear set without losing much overall damage compared to a power setup. This is what helps condition builds lean into their slow, attrition-based playstyle and grind their enemies down while being durable enough to survive aggression. Damage is fantastic, and we all love to see it, but sometimes the color green is more appealing, and for that you might want to consider healing power. There is, however, not much to say. It's beautifully simple. Healing, barrier abilities, the regeneration boon, and lifesteal healing all have a base value, and then just like a power attack, get a bonus value added equal to a skill-specific multiplier multiplied by your healing power attribute. Healing scaling might not seem as strong as damage scaling, and heals can't critically strike, but don't let that fool you. Supports are absolutely essential, and in fact, end up as a lot of the metagame defining builds in all game modes. This is because Guild Wars 2 is designed such that every profession has a way of sustaining itself through dodges, at least one healing ability and other mitigation. If supports were any stronger, then nobody would ever die. And well, on that note, in the domain of players versus monsters, there are some supports that break the game in truly terrifyingly unstoppable ways. 
Of course, we must now mention the other component of support, and indeed our final attribute, concentration. Concentration, similarly to expertise, increases your boon duration by 1% per 15 concentration. Again, capped at 100%. If you've watched the Boons and Conditions guide, you will know just how awesome boons can be. And in this video, that will have been driven home even more. So I hardly need to explain it at this point. Boon duration is great because, well, boons are great, and you have a limited amount of abilities that apply them, so when possible, you want to squeeze all the juice out of them and make sure those boons last as long as you need them. This is particularly relevant for boons that completely counter a mechanic, such as stability or resistance, which grant immunity to hard crowd control and all conditions, respectively. It's quite uncommon to have a support character that just heals in Guild Wars 2. In fact, often a huge part, if not the best part, of support builds is the boon access. So if you're planning on healing, you'll probably be looking to pick up boon duration too. And there are fortunately great gear options to help you do this. However, supports in Guild Wars 2 can be very aggressive as well. A classic example would be the Chronomancer, which often employs concentration combined with power, precision, and ferocity to deal high damage while empowering allies with quickness, or a necromancer providing healing, barrier, and revival while also packing quite the condition punch. This interesting hybridization is what creates some really interesting strategies and team compositions in Guild Wars 2 that a traditional Holy Trinity just can't. There are a few bonus attributes in the hero panel that we can quickly go over. First up is your profession mechanic bonus, which is exactly what it says on the tin. More of this makes your profession mechanics better, usually in the form of recharging faster. This includes Elementalist Attunement Recharge Speed, Guardian Virtues Recharge Speed, or Maximum Necromancer Death Shroud, and so on. You don't get this from gear though. Only picking specific trait lines, part of your character's loadout, can do this. Typically, 15% is how much you'll get. Next up is Agony Resistance. You might notice something called an Infusion slot on your Ascended gear if you have any. This is where you can put Agony Resistance Infusions. These upgrades give you defense against a mechanic called Agony in the Fractal game mode, which is very similar to dungeons in other MMORPGs. However, Fractals scale in difficulty, and the higher level, the more Agony Resistance will be required to survive certain attacks. Without high resistance, certain effects or even passive ticking damage will instantly kill you. 150 Agony Resistance is needed to tackle the most fearsome level 100 Fractals. Finally is Magic Find. Magic Find is once again very self-explanatory. More Magic Find, better loot. Every time you loot an item, the game decides if it will be a special item or a junk item. The more magic fun you have, the more likely you are to get a higher quality item instead of junk. Bear in mind, this doesn't mean you get more loot or even more valuable loot, just higher quality according to the game's gear tier system. This bonus does only apply to kills though. This means that a lot of ultra rare drops aren't affected by magic find. Certain loot containers are affected, and these will be marked in their tooltips, but most are not. After all that, Magic Find might not sound super exciting, but it definitely does add up as you climb up into the hundreds and use boosters. You'll see a lot more crafting materials and rare items dropping from slaying enemies, which are usually more valuable, and this is a great incremental bonus over time, as a lot of Guild Wars 2 farming is going to involve mowing down veritable armies of monsters. Magic Find is obtained from a few sources, an account-wide luck modifier increased by eating luck particles from salvaged gear and completing achievements, using various boosters that increase Magic Find, using consumables, and a few other sources like a guild boost, map bonuses, festival buffs, or special infusions. You can crank it all the way up to around a thousand percent, which is a very impressive number. You might expect a 100% magic find to double your chances of getting a certain rare item, but player research indicates that isn't the case. Oddly enough, it seems you'll need a 1000% magic find to do that, so that's a bit unlucky. The good news is, at a 1000%, you'll seemingly never get a junk item. 
And with that, we have covered all the essential information about gear and attributes in Guild Wars 2. You no longer have any excuse for going into battle unprepared. As always, let me know if you have any questions and hop over to my Twitch channel to directly access my mind. Stay tuned for future episodes and be sure to watch the rest of the series. By this point, we've covered almost all of the game's core mechanics, which is a great place to be starting from in Guild Wars 2. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.